In this video, we're going to see how to use Microsoft Azure's Bing Search API to search for keywords and get web pages as results. And then we're going to see how to use Beautiful Soup and Python to scrape the results that we get in order to retrieve the HTML data. So let's get started. What we're going to do, first of all, is create a resource group on Microsoft Azure. Now, if you've not used Azure before, we'll look at this page here and this section down here, what is a resource group? A resource group is a container that holds related resources for an Azure solution. So this may include things like databases, web servers, caches, and anything else you might include as some logical unit in your cloud application. So what we're going to do is create a resource group for a Bing search API. So let's create a resource in the Azure cloud. And if we search here for resource group, we should be able to select that from the drop down. And here we can actually create a resource group. So you can hit the create button here and you'll be taken to a page here that allows you to fill in some details. You can select your subscription type. And of course you will need an Azure account to do this. And then you can give the resource group a name here. I'm going to call this bug bites resources in this case, just any name will do here. And for the region, the best approach is to select one that's closest to where you are geographically. So I'm going to select UK South in this case. And once we're done with that, you can review and create the group at the bottom and finally hit the create button. So as you can see in this pop up, the resource group has been created. You can then go to that resource group and here is where you can add resources to it. Now what we want to do is call the Bing search API with keywords and get back search results. So what we're going to do here within the resource group is hit this create button at the top. If we hit create, we are then taken to this page here. And what we're going to do is type in Bing in this case, and it's going to be the Bing search version seven. That will take us through here. We can hit create in this case, and we're taken to another page. Here is where we create a Bing resource. So we're going to give it a name of Bing search test. Again, it will be attached to a subscription and here we select the pricing tier. Now for this video, we're just going to select the free tier so that we don't spend any money that restricts us to free calls per second or a thousand calls per month. And we also see that the Bing search test is going to be part of the bug bites resources resource group. So you can then hit confirm here and go to the bottom and select create and that will create that resource here. As you can see, it's submitting the deployment. The deployment is in progress. And if you wait a few seconds, you see that the deployment has succeeded on the page. You get some information here about the resource. We can go to the resource if we want to look at that. And on the left hand bar, that's where for Microsoft Azure resources, you get some pages showing you some important information about the resources. Now, what's going to be important for us is to look at this particular section here. It says keys and endpoint. If we click that, we're taken through to this page here. The keys are what you can use in your applications and scripts in order to call the Bing search API. And that allows you to call any of these APIs. You've got a web search API, you've got an image search, news search, video search, and so on. So there's a lot of different types of APIs provided by Microsoft Bing. What we're going to do is we're going to get this key here. We're going to copy it to the clipboard. And then we're going to use that and reference it within a Python script. So let's go to VS code. We're going to write a Python script in this particular file, but first we need to install some dependencies for the API request for the web scraping and also to read in config from a .env file. Now, first of all, we need to install the requirements for this project. So I'm going to paste this command in here into a virtual environment. We're installing requests, beautiful soup for and Python decouple. And we'll go through what each of those does later in the video. So let's install those just now. And once that's installed, you can write it out to a requirements.txt file with the pip freeze command, and then send that output to requirements.txt. What that's going to do is create a requirements.txt file within the project containing all of the dependencies that have been installed. And you can see beautiful soup, Python decouple and requests along with some of their dependencies in this file. So what we're going to do now is start writing this Python script and to help us do this, we're going to go to the Bing documentation, which you can find here and I'll link this in the description. It's a quick start on how to use Python to call the API. And as you can see, you need a subscription key in order to do this. So what we're going to do is go back to Microsoft Azure 
and we're going to copy this to the clipboard again. This is one of the two keys and you can copy any of the two keys and it should work. So let's go back to VS Code and create a .env file. So new file and it's going to be called .env. And into that file, we're going to create a variable called subscription key. And we can set that equal to the value that we've copied from Microsoft Azure. That's the key on the Bing resource. Now, a good practice here would be to add this to your .getignore file. So we'll add the .env file to that so that these keys are not accidentally committed to GitHub or any other source control repository. You always want to hide these from public view. So now that we have that, we're going to try reading it in here in the Bing test. So let's import the requests library and we're also going to say from decouple, we'll import the config object. Now Python decouple is a library that allows you to read in configuration from .env files in a Pythonic manner. So what we're going to do is set a variable called subscription key and we're going to use the config object to read in the variable subscription key from the .env file. Now one of the things config gives you, it gives you the ability to set a default if it's not specified in the .env file. And the config object will look in your .env file for a value of subscription key, which is specified by this here, the first parameter. And if it finds it, that will be the value set in the Python variable. So let's print that to the terminal and we can see if that's actually worked. To execute the script, we can say python bing test.py and we see we get the correct value here for the subscription key. So this use of Python decouple allows us to securely read in values from a .env file into our Python applications. And I'll leave a link in the description to the documentation for Python decouple if you want to know more about that. But what we're going to do now is we're going to send an API request to Bing and we're going to use the requests library to do this. Now let's reference some documentation that Bing has here. This quick start here has some good code that will get you started. First of all, we need to define a search URL. So we'll copy this here and we're going to paste this into our script. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this section here for making a request. You can see that this is also using requests, the library, and we're going to copy this code here into our script and we're going to modify it slightly. So let's paste that in here. Now on line eight, we have a dictionary with this key. This is the HTTP header that the Bing API will look for for the subscription key. And if it finds a valid subscription key, it will allow you to perform the search. We also have the parameters. This is basically the data that's being sent to the API. We have a search term that we're gonna define in a second and a few other fields here. And on the line after that, here on line 11 now, we send a GET request to the search URL, which is the Bing API URL. We attach the HTTP headers and also the URL parameters. And if there's no errors on line 13, we will take the response, which will be JSON data, and we will call the response.json function. That will turn that JSON into a Python dictionary. So the last thing we need to do is define a search term. So let's create a variable here called search term. And let's assume that we're searching for the best Latin American films. So now that we've got this code, let's print out the search results and see what the Bing API gives us back. When we execute the script, we get back some dictionary of data here. Now at the moment, this isn't very readable. So let's import the pprint function from the pprint module. And let's first of all, see what keys we've got in the search results. If we use the dot keys function, we should be able to see that. So we can see in the JSON results, we have these keys here. We have query context, and the one we are gonna look at is the web pages. That gives us the actual web results. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the search results and we're gonna index into that dictionary at web pages. And instead of printing that out, let's save that to a variable called pages. And we will then iterate through those pages and see what each of them contain. So once we've extracted those, let's print these to the terminal using the pprint function. So if we execute the script, we should now see this data coming back here. So we get a bunch of pages back. Again, we can inspect the keys for the response there, and we should be able to see what keys we get. So we get a web search URL, we get a total estimated matches, and we also get a value key as well. The value key gives us more data about the web pages themselves, so we can then see results equals pages value. So let's pprint the first result to the terminal, and we can use that notation there. And when we execute the script, we should get back this dictionary of data. And we can see information about the results, such as the ID, the snippet here containing some text, and also the concrete URL that you would click through to in the search results to get more information. So what we want to do now is we want to iterate over the first 
10 results. We're only going to select 10 for this tutorial. And for each of those, we're going to scrape the URL using Beautiful Soup. So this URL is for this particular result. It contains some HTML. And we can use Beautiful Soup in order to scrape that and extract data from the page. So let's start doing that just now. We're going to write a for loop here. And it's going to be for result in results. And remember, we only want the first 10, so we can use the slicing notation to get that. And we're now going to send a request using the requests module. So we'll create a variable called response. And we set that equal to requests.get. And we're going to get the URL from this result object. When we've sent the request, we can get the content using the response.content property on the response object. And that will give us back basically the HTML of the page. Let's see if that works by printing the content and we can break out the for loop so that we only do the first iteration. Let's clear the terminal and we can execute this again and we'll see what we get back. We get back a lot of HTML data and we're gonna clean this up a little bit in a second. Let's clear the terminal and go back to the script. Now at this point, we're scraping the HTML and we want to extract data from that. And to do that, we're gonna use the beautiful soup library. So at the top, from BS4 import the beautiful soup object and we're going to use that down here to send the HTML into that object and parse it. Now what we want to do is the response content we want to pass that to the beautiful soup object and what you need to do here is create a variable we're going to call it soup and we're going to create a beautiful soup object here and the first parameter to that is going to be this content. And the second parameter to that is going to be the html.parser to indicate that we're going to be parsing HTML data. And we can clear this print statement as well. So the next step in this process, we want to get the body tag of the page. And we're going to then get only the text. We're going to strip away all the HTML and just get the text. So let's set a variable called text and we're going to say soup.find and we'll find the body HTML tag. The find function will return a single object won't return a collection like the find all function so we'll get back the body tag and then we can get the text all of the text within that body tag using the get text function and this will remove all the html elements and attributes and just return the text within them and it will do that recursively through the dom tree so we're going to get back all of the text contained on each web page within the body tag. And once we've got that text, we can call the strip function to clean that up at the start and end of the text. And that gives us back some text, which we can then print to the terminal. And we can see how this looks like. We should no longer see the HTML, we should just see textual data. So let's execute this script and see what that looks like. And when that completes, you should get the text for the first page, the search result that we got from the Bing API. And you can see all of the HTML is gone. We're left with some very unclean text. Now let's say we wanted to perform some text processing on this response. What we're going to do is clean up this text a little bit with two list comprehensions. Now the first list comprehension, I'm going to create a variable here called cleaned text and we're going to set this equal to the string with a space dot join. So what we're going to do is create an array out of this text and we're going to remove the new lines from the text. As you've seen above, we had a lot of new lines in this data. So what we're going to do is remove those and what we can do is we can take the text and we can call dot split on that and we'll pass the new line character to that. So that should split the text on the new lines and remove those and then that creates an array with all of the objects. We can then join that up with an empty string here and with a space. If we print that to our terminal we should then see that the new lines are pretty much gone and we'll see what that looks like just now. And the text we get back now is slightly cleaner, it contains no new lines, it's all text, but there are a lot of spaces. So the next goal is to fix that and clean that up a little bit. So I'm gonna copy this clean text line above and we're gonna write one more of these. It's gonna be very similar, but instead of splitting on a new line, we're just gonna call split with the default, which is actually a space like that. But we don't need to specify that, so we'll leave it blank. If I clear the terminal and we re-execute this, we should now get the text back in a much cleaner way with a single space between all of the characters and no new lines, as you can see below here. So this code here gives you a way to send a request to the results page that we get from the Bing API, and we perform some very basic cleanup of the text on lines 25 and 26 after extracting the text only from the body tag. So we're using requests, we're using beautiful soup together in order to get this data from a random web page. And then once you have the text in this format, you can perform any analysis or machine learning that you want. 
Here we'll perform some very simple analysis using the counter object in Python. And of course, once you have this text cleaned up, you can store it within a database or a file or any other storage format you want if you want to avoid sending these requests and doing processing in the future. So what we're going to do is we're going to perform a count analysis. So let's import from the collections module the counter class here. And if we go back down to our for loop, we can perform basic analysis by counting the number of occurrences of each word. So let's create a variable called counter and to that we're going to instantiate the counter object from collections and we'll pass to that the cleaned text dot split. Again, we're going to split this on a space so that it creates an array and then the counter will count the number of occurrences of each distinct element in that array. And as I said before, you don't actually need this parameter to split. By default, it will split on spaces anyway. And once we have that, we can use the counter's most common function. We pass to that a number such as 10 and it will give us the 10 most common elements within the list that we provide. Let's print that to the terminal so we can see the most common words in this first web page. Executing the script here, once we get this result, we should be able to see the most frequent words in the text we got from the page. And as you can see, there are words such as rate and random characters and letters and also stop words such as the. Now we're not particularly interested in these, so let's amend this statement as a final part of this video. And we only want to return words that have greater than five characters in them. So what we're going to do here is turn this into a list comprehension and we'll say x for x and cleaned data dot split. But we're only going to consider x's that are greater than five characters. So we'll chain an if statement at the end here and we'll say if len of x is greater than five. So what that's going to do is remove the shorter words and we can get a bit more interesting analysis of frequencies here. If we re-execute the script, we should hopefully get something back that's a little bit better than what we had before. And you see here we get words like error, please, we get director, stars, and other words you would get typically associated with films. And you can make this length as long or short as you like, let's say greater than 10, and we'll see what we get back for that. And now we get some very typical words associated with filmmaking, such as documentary, revolutionary, and a couple of directors here as well. So that's how you perform a basic frequency analysis. Now let's overview this video one last time. What we're doing is we're using the requests module. We're calling the Azure Bing resource API. That will give us some search results based on a search term that we provide. We take the JSON data we get back here on line 17 and we turn it into a Python dictionary, which we can then index in at the appropriate key to get the data that we need. This gives us back some search results and we can then iterate over those search results, in this case, the first 10 results. And we send a request to the URL for each of those results to get the HTML data for that page. We take that HTML data and we provide it to Beautiful Soup and that allows us to parse out particular HTML elements such as the body tag. And to that body tag, we remove all the HTML elements and attributes and we get only the text content that's associated with the page. And then we clean that up a little bit and we use the counter object from the collections module here to count up the number of occurrences of each word in the text. So very basic, you can remove the break statement if you want to do this with the first 10 results instead of just one. And you can store that data in a database. You can do anything you want with that data. So that's all for this video. We've seen how to create resources on Microsoft Azure. We've seen how to query the Bing API, and we've seen how to use Beautiful Soup to parse out the text from each page. A bit of a mix of ideas, but if you're interested in seeing more Azure content or AWS, please leave a comment in the description. But for now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.